Joining me now is Pulitzer Prize winning presidential biographer John Meacham, who occasionally advises President Biden. His new book, which is on the New York Times bestseller list, is titled And There Was Light, Abraham Lincoln and the American Struggle. Congratulations on the bestseller list, my friend. Um, let's Thank talk you. about the election deniers in Congress. Uh, yes, some key races. They did not win when they were in competitive races, but there's going to be quite a few of them in Congress next year. What does it say, or how are you feeling about the state of our democracy today? I'm feeling better today than I was 24 hours ago, or even 12 hours ago, I guess. Uh, look, American democracy is about, at its best, is about finding solutions to problems in according to commonly agreed upon rules and to winning power through popular elections for a temporal period of time. And it's not about pursuing power at any cost. Uh, that's a state of nature, right? That's anarchy. That's autocracy. Democracy is dependent on our being able to win graciously, lose humbly, uh, and to see that not every election, not every vote uh, in Congress or in a state house is an occasion for total war. And I think that there was a sense, to my mind anyway, as an observer, uh, that the country moved closer to that view of things than we would have thought uh, at the, in the winter of 2021. Uh, we live in an age where a mob stormed the United States Capitol. Uh, and a lot of us have worried that forces of unreason, uh, of extremism, were going to be permanent parts of our political experience. They are permanent parts, but they ebb and they flow. And here's hoping that the American people last night said, you know what, they need to ebb for now. John, the president gave a, a really a closing message, a speech about the threats to democracy and was widely criticized for not talking about the economy. Yet, in our final poll and in the exit polls, democracy was on the minds of Americans. Uh, perhaps yeah. there were different interpretations of what the threats were, Republicans versus Democrats, and each side believing that the other is extreme, which doesn't, you know, help resolve the essential problem of polarization that is eating away right. at our political structure. But in retrospect, Joe Biden yeah. wasn't wrong to give that speech. No, and I think you can say he was right. Uh, and I should say I helped with that speech. Uh, so obviously I agree <laughs> with, okay. with, with its message. Uh, so um, it's a little like uh, there's an old story about a preacher who said, as our Lord said, and rightly, da da da. So, uh, so just take this, uh, take this for what it's worth. Um, I think it's remarkable that uh, so many people seem, again, seem, to have accepted this argument because it's it's a complicated it's a tricky argument right i mean ordinarily elections are about a tax rate an immigration policy uh you know something very tactile and right before them and what the president was asking uh particularly after uh, the winter of 2021 was that we take a step back and we vote to preserve an experiment that has been tested by war and depression and foreign threat. Uh, this is the anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall uh, in 1989. And, you know, we, we, we've exerted power. We've come through uh, red scares and, and uh, terrible backlash to civil rights. Our whole history is about conflict, but it's also about resolution. And how does that resolution come? That resolution comes because we have a basis of popular support for a government that has accepted elections. Herbert Hoover in 1932 did not say Franklin Roosevelt stole the election, so he put a bunch of election deniers on the ballot in 34 so that he could come back in 36. Hubert Humphrey didn't do that in 1968. Al Gore didn't do that in 2000, when he so graciously conceded and uh, saw that the rule of law would prevail. And so, you know, Andrea and Katie, you, you, you all had to listen to me talk about this for, for too long through the years. But basically, where we have been is 
For a long time, I thought that the former president, the 45th president, was a difference of degree in American politics and not a wholly different kind of phenomenon. And what the winter of 2021 taught us was that that was different. That didn't happen. Andrew Jackson, who lost the popular vote in 1824 and lost the election in the House, he hashtagged that race. He called it a corrupt bargain in the Twitter of the era, but he came back to Nashville and ran for re-election. And, you know, we, every other president has acknowledged the mechanics of democracy. Donald Trump chose not to, and we saw what happened. And I think the, the thing that I take away from last night is the gubernatorial races, the uh, secretary of state races in, in critical states. Just enough of us, just enough of us said, you know what, I want my vote to count whether I win or lose, because if I lose this time, I want to make sure if I'm on the winning side next time, I want it to count. John Meacham, thank you so much. I just want to remind, and don't need to remind you, John, the historian, but the fall of the Berlin Wall on this anniversary was the most extraordinary event, uh, tectonic shift, and it was live on NBC Nightly News because of Tom Brokaw's reporting. And we were the only American journalist there, and an America, a German ambassador. Uh, years later, I was witness to him telling a, a young diplomat, he said, he was a young attache at the United Nations, and he learned that his country had been freed by watching NBC that night and, uh, and the Brandenburg Gate and the Berlin Wall. And that, we think of those symbols and how important they are, you know, symbols that you and your books have made so, you know, so memorable over the decades. John Meacham.